Over the past 50 years, one of the dividend stocks that investors absolutely have loved is Coca-Cola stock. And one of the investors that actually loves this company is Warren Buffett himself. Coca-Cola is currently the fourth largest position in his entire portfolio, and he's been holding onto the stock for a very long time, and it's estimated that he has a yield on cost of over 50%. So that means for every $1,000 he invested, he's now receiving over $500 in dividend payments every single year. So that's pretty impressive. Now, the stock is trading at about $68.64, and if we look at them in the past year, they're up around 12.74%. So the stock is actually doing really well. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a disclaimer. I'm actually not buying Coca-Cola stock right now, and I don't have any plans to add more shares soon, and I'm gonna discuss on why this is later in the video. But with that being said, that doesn't mean you shouldn't consider Coca-Cola. Now, I need to take a step back. First off, again, transparency. Coca-Cola is a stock I own in my portfolio, and if I blow up my growth chart, you can actually see this is a position I'm up pretty big on. I'm up around 50% on my Coca-Cola position, so that's huge gains. Now, I haven't added shares in a long time, and again, I'm gonna talk to you why. Now, one of the things we have to understand first, if we take a look at the CNN Fear Greed Index, right now, there's a lot of fear in the markets. It just recently dipped back over to fear, but over the past few weeks, it's been closer to being in extreme fear. Now, if we look at Coca-Cola over the past month, they're up about 7.56%, but if we compare this to the market as a whole, we can see the S&P 500 is down over 3%. So we have to understand what's going on here. So to understand this, first off, let's go ahead and jump over to my dividend breakdown sheet. Again, you can download any of my spreadsheets over on tickerdata.com and also get access to the ticker data add-on that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet. But if we come up here and plug in KO and hit enter, all this data will automatically load in. And we can see right from the get-go, keep in mind, this is a dividend king. They've been increasing dividend payments for over 50 consecutive years. The starting dividend yield is decent, sitting at about 2.83%. We can see, again, they have been growing those dividend payments, like I just mentioned, for the past 10 and over 60 years, actually. And it looks like, for the most part, since 2019, free cash flow has been covering those dividend payments. So when we talk about Coca-Cola stock, we have to understand, investors view this as a very stable company, one that's not going away anytime soon, and they view the dividend payments as very safe. Now, with that being said, we can see the payout ratios are actually relatively high. Payout ratio sitting at 74% and free cash flow payout ratio sitting at 81.58%. But overall, basically what I'm trying to say, again, Coca-Cola, the dividend payments are viewed as very safe and very secure and very, very predictable. Now, here's why investors like this again. There's a lot of murmurings of a potential recession looming. Now, whether or not that's true, that's another subject. I have my own opinions, but based on what we're seeing on the market, it's clear that a lot of people do have that opinion. And it appears there's a little bit of an inverse relationship with the S&P 500 selling off and Coca-Cola stock going up. What we're seeing is a move from these high-flying tech stocks that investors have loved for the past couple of years into more stable companies that have predictable cash flows, predictable dividend payments. Now, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But first, what I want to do before we look at my other spreadsheets is jump into the investor's presentation because there's a few key slides that I want to point out. And the first one is actually going to be on the eighth slide. Again, Coca-Cola isn't expected to have massive growth opportunities in the future, but I do want to point out there's still potential growth in emerging markets. And what we can see is 17 years of 3 to 5% industry growth from 1990 to 2023. That's decent for a company the size of Coca-Cola. So again, huge focus for them is going to be in developing and emerging markets. One of the things one of my viewers has pointed out before is it pretty much doesn't matter what country you go to, even third world countries. They have Coca-Cola products at their corner stores. The brand is very strong and it's well known worldwide. If we jump over to the 24th slide, we can see where Coca-Cola has been in the past and where they're hoping to be in the future. So for example, we can see in the past, they were talking about how they had slower organic revenue growth than they wanted. They had flat comparable operating margins, average of around $2 comparable earnings per share, and then the big problems here is dividends were exceeding free cash flow. Again, if we jump back over to our dividend breakdown sheet, we can see a couple of examples of this. Look here in 2017. The amount they paid out in dividends was around $6.2 billion, while free cash flow generated was $5.4 billion. Now, this is a huge problem because if you've watched the channel before, you know dividends are paid out of free cash flow. So anytime the dividend payments are larger than free cash flow, that's not going to be sustainable long term. In fact, that's a huge red flag for the company. In order for a company to continually grow their dividend payments over time, their free cash flow needs to be larger than the rate of their dividend payments, and that also leaves capital for them left over to reinvest back into the business, allowing them to generate more free cash flow year over year. So that's an important concept to understand. And speaking of free cash flow and capital allocation, we can actually see there's a slide they talk about this here 
on their investors presentation. And I absolutely love it when companies talk about this because it lets you know how do they plan on rewarding you as a shareholder? How is the company planning on using their money to grow their business and reward me personally? So we can see one of the top priorities for the company and for any company should be to reinvest back into the business. And this is something they have been doing and we can see for the 2024 outlook, they're planning on reinvesting about 2.2 billion back into the business. Now, if we come over here, we can see one of their top priorities for rewarding shareholders is by paying out dividends, as we already know. Again, the stock is a dividend king, 50 consecutive years of dividend payments, and their 2024 outlook is to pay out $1.94 per share in dividend payments. Now below this, we can see they're hoping to have positive net share repurchases, and this hasn't always been the case for the company. But so overall, they are planning on buying back some shares. Now, along with these three items we can't see over the past few years, there have also been a few acquisitions. And then finally, they give us some 2024 guidance. They expect organic revenues to grow at about 9 to 10%, which is actually quite a bit larger than I would have originally anticipated. Comparable earnings per share at about 5 to 6%. Comparable currency neutral earnings per share 13 to 15%. And then they expect free cash flow at $9.2 billion. Again, if we jump back over to that dividend breakdown sheet, we can see in 2023, free cash flow was sitting at about $9.74 billion. So they're actually projecting it a little bit lower. But what we can see is their projected free cash flow should still cover their dividend payments. Now, if we jump over to my stock screener, come up here and plug in KO. And this data will load in. And what you'll notice is there's not necessarily a whole lot of growth going on here with the top and bottom lines. And to kind of reaffirm this, if we jump over to the profitability spreadsheet, again, we'll plug in KO. And what we'll see is it looks like over the past five years, their compounded annual growth rate when it comes to revenue is around 6%. So it's kind of what you would expect for where they are in the lifespan of their business. We can see net income a little bit better at about 10.74%. That's pretty solid. And they actually have decent gross profit ratios. So when you're looking at all these metrics, one of the things we have to keep in mind again is what stage are they in when it comes to their business life cycle. And Coca-Cola is definitely in a very mature state. Now there are pros and cons to this. Obviously stocks that are in their growth cycle tend to have a lot more volatility. They jump up and down quite a bit, but they can see a lot more organic revenue growth in those stages. But with their currently being fear in the market, investors are looking for more mature companies, again, who have very predictable cash flows. And that is exactly what Coca-Cola is. I don't think the company is necessarily going to be declining anytime soon, but they will be staying relatively steady and actually having some slight growth. Now, one of the things I do also want to point out about Coca-Cola is their balance sheet actually looks pretty decent. And what we'll see with Coca-Cola is first off, debt to assets ratio in a healthy range, sitting at about 43%. So total assets is definitely covering total debt. And the same is true with current ratio. Again, when we look at current ratio, this is sitting at 1.13. We want to look for a number above one because it means they can meet their short-term debt obligations. So now we kind of have an idea of where Coca-Cola is at as a company, what their fundamentals look like, and why there's a lot of capital currently going into this stock. But with all that being said, is the company trading at a fair value at $68.58 and should we consider buying? And obviously that's going to depend on a few different variables, but let's go ahead and run this through our valuation model. Again, we'll come up here and plug in KO and all this data will load in. Now, again, the reason people like this when a recession is potentially looming is look at the beta. This is a measure of the volatility of the stock. It's only sitting at 0.59, so it doesn't have a lot of volatility, which a lot of people like. So it's actually pretty rare to see months like the past month where the company's up 7.5%. The stock doesn't typically move that much. Now, the first valuation we'll look at is going to be Graham's valuation. And this value is a company based on the earnings per share growth projected. And it's also taking into account current market conditions. So when we plug in all these variables into our formula here, we come to an intrinsic value of just $37.85, quite a bit lower than what the company is currently trading at. Now, if we look at our discounted cash flow model, this value is a company based on how much free cash flow they're projected to produce in the future. So you can see we're going with a free cash flow growth rate of around 8%. Might even be a little bit on the high end, to be honest with you, but after taking into account things like cash and cash equivalents and total debt, we come to a DCF price per share of $51.64. The next valuation is our multiples valuation. I'll zoom in just a little bit, and we're seeing how the market is valuing companies that are comparable in their structure. So we have companies like Pepsi and Monster. Look at the price to earnings multiple of these companies. The average is sitting at about 28.0033 near the end. So when we apply Coca-Cola's earnings per share to this average price to earnings multiple, we come to an intrinsic value of about $69.44, which is really close to what the company is currently trading at. And then finally, when we glance at our dividend discount model, this is one of the favorites among dividend investors, especially when you value stocks like Coca-Cola. So what this does is we value the company based on how much they're paying out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing over time. The average growth rate over the past few years is around 4.3%. So 
If they can achieve 4% dividend growth moving forward with a discount rate of 8%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of $50.44. So when we jump over to the output tab, you can see in the scenario, we're actually not using Graham's valuation. And the reason behind this is I don't feel like it's a great way to value very mature companies. It leans heavily on the earnings per share growth. So with the three valuations that we use, we come to an intrinsic value of about $57.17 per share. Now, this is around a 20% difference from the current trading price of the company. And even with a 10% margin of safety, our acceptable buy price comes all the way down to around $51.45. So it looks like this company is definitely trading at a premium. And really this doesn't come as a surprise. This is a company that trades at a premium quite often. The company has a massive brand. It's owned by Warren Buffett. The company is very mature and has very predictable and very stable cash flows and very predictable dividend payments that they've been paying out for over 60 consecutive years. So it should come as absolutely no surprise that the company is rising while the market is falling and while there is fear in the markets. So here's some quick thoughts. If you're someone close to retirement age or someone who's wanting to live off dividend payments, Coca-Cola is going to give you those stable and predictable dividend payments regardless of what's going on in the market. And that's why we see so many people liking this stock right now. But if you have a long time horizon, I don't see any reason you should consider buying Coca-Cola right now. Again, I bought a few years ago and I'm up pretty big because I bought in at a great valuation, but the company is definitely trading at quite a premium right now. But go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below if you plan on buying or selling. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.